Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. In the past month, I've looked at a tiny implementation of a C compiler which fits in less than 200 lines of code, and it gave me an idea to look at more smaller projects like this and to understand their internals. So therefore, today let's look at an example application that creates an icon in system tray like these ones I have here. Now, this app will use a library which utilizes the DPS protocol, and in other words this means it will only work on non-Windows and non-Mac OS OSs, e.g. Linux and different types of BSDs. Anyways, let's get started. The code we'll be looking at is a part of libayatana app indicator repository, namely an example use case of the library. I cloned the repository and here is the contents of the example folder, which is actually the only thing we're interested in. We're going to look at the C version of the example, so let's open the file called simpleclient.c. Now, before we get started, there's a couple of things we need to prepare. Now, first off, I'm running Arch Linux and for some reason I need to fix the first include path like this. And also inside the file, we have some macro clauses which do different actions depending on the GTK version used. We have a recent version of GTK, so let's just remove this for better readability. Second thing, there's a CMake project for building the example, but to make things, in my opinion, just a bit clearer, let's just remove it. And let's replace it with a simple shell script file, which we'll just call build.sh. And I'll just paste a compiler command to this file. You can see that here we just invoke the C compiler, we enable all warnings, enable debug info and set the binary name to out. Then we provide the source file and then we invoke two subshells which generate compiler flags for the dbus menu glib and ayatana app indicator libraries. By the way, these are also the two external requirements for this example so make sure they are both in installed on your system. The last argument provides the local icon macro value to be the path of the image we need in the example. So this is this image right here. Now finally this directory also contains the Vala example which we won't look at today so let's just remove it. Now let's open a terminal and let's run our build command and then immediately after that let's run the produced binary. Before we do that though we need to add the run permission to our build script though. The program is now running. I'll put the system tray on screen so you can see what we're working with and let's just keep this running throughout the video so we'll refer to the icon or program standard output while we browse through the code. So inside the source file let's first scroll down until we find the main function. So here it is. If you don't know in C the main function is an entry point to our program. First thing we do is we initialize the app indicator concept construct alongside the menu variable, which is of type GTK widget. Now, if you aren't familiar with GTK, don't worry. The important thing you need to know is that the building block of GTK is a widget and these widgets are organized in a tree-like structure. And for example, a widget can be a button or for example, a container, as is also the case for our menu variable here. Here in our main function, what we need to know is that this ci variable which is of type app indicator basically handles our gtk application we just need to create a menu widget and then pass it to our app indicator after we create the app indicator variable we set some properties to it these are one-time calls and if you want to know more about them please just refer to the library's docs and now is the first time we actually connect some logic to our icon we connect a scroll event callback, which is a function, to the GTK scroll event. Now, if we look at the implementation of this callback, we see that we just print something to standard output. Let's head over to the terminal where the app is running and let's hover with the mouse over the icon and let's scroll up and down with the scroll wheel. 
As expected, some messages get printed. Now let's head back over to our file and let's scroll down just a bit more where we can see the menu widget getting created. Below this line, there's a recurring pattern which can be described a bit like this. Create a GTK widget, connect a callback function to certain events to the widget, append the widget to our menu, and finally show the widget. This pattern repeats itself to almost the end of the file. Each button is a bit different though. For example, button with number 3 has a submenu, which gets created in the append submenu function call, and it looks like this. Or for example, if we scroll down even more, the last button has a callback, which replaces the default app icon with the custom one. In the tray itself, this looks something like this. Some buttons though just print out something to standard output, which we can also see on the terminal here. Ok, near the bottom of the main function, as we said before, we set the menu variable to our app indicator and then we create the GTK main loop and we run it. Internally this call starts the GTK event loop, which basically takes control over the program and among other things triggers different callbacks we went over earlier. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it. I encourage you to go over the code base and try this example yourself. Try some things out and maybe also give the Vala example a chance. I'll make sure to put a link to the project to the video description. Other than that, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye!